Hi everyone, I hope this finds you in good health. As always, this learning is done in the merit of a refuah lama, a complete healing for the whole world. Welcome to Emuna Until the Sunset. In these emails, I try to focus on ideas of Emuna and the Parshiot, the portions we read from the Torah. Emuna, generally translated as faith, can also be described as accustoming oneself to see all the phenomena of life as manifestations of God's presence. This week's Parsha in Bamidbar, Numbers, is Pinchas. A short summary. At the very end of last week's Parsha, Balak, Pinchas, or Phineas, kills Zimri from the tribe of Shimon, Simeon, for publicly cohabiting with Cosby, a Midianite princess. With this act, the plague that was raging due to the immoral acts of Zimri and other Israelite men was ended. Because of this, God grants Pinchas with a covenant of peace, as well as the kahuna, the priesthood. A census is taken in order to divide the land. The five daughters of a man named Slovchad petition Moshe, Moses, to be granted the portion of land belonging to their father, as he died without sons. God accepts their claim, and the Torah's laws of inheritance are given. So back to the beginning. Zimri and Cosby were publicly killed for their immorality, yes. But then the plague was ended. So yes, two people died, but thousands lived. On the surface, sacrificing a few for many is okay. We learn in the Mishnah that from Adam, all of humanity is descended. So anyone who destroys one life, it is as if they have destroyed the whole world. Conversely, saving one life is like saving the whole world. I actually thought about this idea yesterday. There was a fly that had been buzzing around my workstation for literally two straight days. I am a wimp with spotty hand-eye coordination, so I couldn't manage to get it. After two days of me frantically swatting away this irritating bug, I had finally had enough. I got out a fly swatter and, even with my bad hand-eye coordination, managed to get it. For a moment, I was truly thrilled that fly had infuriated me for two days. But then I felt really guilty. What if that fly had a family who was waiting for him slash her? A presentation at work? A best friend's surprise birthday party? Don't worry, I know this is a ridiculous thing to say. My brother, Benjamin, quickly shot down this mental image when he shared that houseflies live for a month or less. But this really got me thinking, well, for one, that I would be very bad at violent crimes, but more importantly, that every life is really and truly a world. Have you ever heard of the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows? It's a project by John Koenig that aimed to come up with new words for emotions that currently lack words. There are some really moving words, but one that has always stood out to me is sonder, inspired by the German word sonder, which means special, and the French word sonder, meaning to probe. Sonder is the profound feeling of realizing that everyone, including strangers passed in the street, has a life as complex as one's own, which they are constantly living despite one's personal lack of awareness of it. I'm sure you've all felt some semblance of this emotion before, but couldn't quite put your finger on the way to express it. I personally get this feeling a lot. Sometimes when I see elementary slash middle school in the summertime, they're empty at the moment, but they're full of experiences and memories from thousands of kids. When I'm traveling, why is that woman reading Codependent No More? Is that man listening to Hamilton? And when I see park benches, which young mother has sat here with her baby on their first outing and which couple has ended their first date here, etc. Every inch of the world is the location of someone's special memory and yet we walk around all day not even knowing. I think nothing demonstrates this word sonder like this aforementioned idea that a single life is a world. Because a single life is a world. Everyone has a best friend and a favorite book and a favorite pair of socks and a specific toothpaste they use. We are all a world. Okay, so Pinnacus was technically right in his action of saving many at the expense of few, but he still committed a homicide but we can still learn from him. There is a Hasidic rule that everything that one encounters in life is placed there to teach a lesson. So Hasidic master Reb Zusha learned seven things from a thief, the best being, in my opinion, that if at first you don't succeed and are put in jail, try, try again. So if Reb Zusha can learn seven things from a thief, we can surely learn one thing from Pinchas. In my opinion, from Pinchas, we learn to play an active role in our lives. I've brought this concept up before, but we all fall prey to the bystander effect, where many people see or hear something wrong happening but don't act because they think someone else will, if we don't jump at the chance to quote-unquote do. 
That's a whole separate email, but it really is a hugely important quality. We truly should jump to visit the sick, to defend a friend, to be kind, and to help the needy. Okay, so moving on to Benot Slofchad, the daughters of Slofchad. These women are characterized as empowered, and of course they were. They had the chutzpah, the nerve, to stand up for something that was important to them. Not only did they get the right to their own father's land, but they also helped the tons of brother and fatherless daughters of posterity. It's interesting to note that we receive most mitzvot, commandments, in the Torah when God tells them to Moshe, and then Moshe tells B'nai Israel. Did the writers of the Torah need to share that the giving of the laws of inheritance were brought down through B'nai Slofchad? Honestly, no. We could have just received the information straight from God. So this inclusion of a group of women bringing down the Torah is really beautiful. In the Midrash, a conversation between Moshe and the daughters is recorded. Moshe refuses them ownership of their father's land three times, in a similar way that a convert is refused three times. Only if we are motivated by the immovable truth deep within our souls can we find the strength to push on. When a new piece of halakha of law is to emerge, it too is like a convert, a new spark wishing to enter the community of B'nai Israel. Also, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, was the greatest prophet who ever lived. And yet, Benot Slofchad still saw something that he did not. This shows us that every soul comes into this world with its own unique aspect of truth, and with its own unique set of talents and gifts. Like a gem that needs to be polished to shine, so should we work to shine as the best version of ourselves, pursuing truth and goodness. May you find that truth this week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. Shabbat Shalom.